Good evening. I want to reinforce something that Greg Judy uh, has talked about quite a bit in his videos and certainly made an impression on me. And it's brought home by the fact that we're currently in a rain deprived situation. We're three or four weeks now without any substantial water from the sky. And I want to show you the difference between dry country that has not been rotationally grazed and uh, property that's been continuously grazed under the same circumstances. So here's a neighbor's place. He's got cattle in here um, basically all, all the time. And this is Bahia grass, same grass that you'll be seeing in the subsequent videos. And what's happened is he's grazed this property off down to where there's just a little bit of stubble. And so he's taken away the solar collector of the leaves that are needed to photosynthesize and um, grow more grass. So without that solar collector, then it takes a long recovery period for this grass to grow back and when there's no moisture it basically stalls out and we don't get any growth at all versus the ground that has grass uh, covering the soil to protect the soil so that there's not as much evaporation that grass has a chance to regrow because the soil mo moisture has been conserved to some degree and there's a little bit of leeway with future grass growth so we've lost our solar collector by overgrazing we've not protected the soil and so we have evaporation and uh, the soil's hot and things just stall out so nothing can grow so I want to show you in subsequent videos the difference in this particular property. And again, not throwing any rocks at the landowner. Um, none of my business with regard to how he manages his property. But I want to show you what management does to positively influence regrowth of grass and the amount of forage you have available for your cattle. So stay tuned. So I want to contrast the video that I just showed you of the pasture that was overgrazed. We're not very far from there and this is the pasture the cattle were moved out of yesterday. They were in this 35 acre pasture for about two weeks and grazing four acre, sometimes five acre paddocks at a time. This was the last paddock they came out of, so they were moved yesterday, and I've got to tell you, hopefully it shows up on video, there's a lot of forage still left in here, a tremendous amount of forage. And we've left the solar panel, which is the grass leaves. We've laid some grass over via trampling to feed the soil and the soil microbiome, which digests the, the trampled grass and then uses it for nutrition, which in turn creates fertility for the grass. So this is the post grazing paddock. I'll show you a currently grazing uh, paddock that's currently being grazed and then go on to a paddock that we will move them into uh, here in a few days. But I want to show you the progression and why leaving half the grass and trampling grass is so important. So here's a paddock that I turned the cows into yesterday and again this is probably a three acre paddock. It extends way down there to the far tree line and you can see the fence line with the electric fence right here. and. These cows have not, they've hit it hard, but look at the 
green once they get the the little bit of scorched tips. <coughs> she has to haul her like that but she does but look at the green in here and again we're just a short distance away from the first from the first pasture I showed you and this is excellent forage <clears throat> the same type of soil nothing's changed except the management so I would 100% advocate this managed intensive grazing, if you will, rotational grazing, whatever you want to call it. It's a little bit of work, but you can you can really increase your cow numbers. Look at the number of cows out here. And all except a couple that are making lots of milk, which that's another conversation for another video. The heavy milkers always get thin and I think Greg is right, Greg Judy is right, you want the the more moderate milking cows so they're not just destroying their body condition making milk for the calf. But again I think this is a testament to managed intensive grazing, rotational grazing and what it can do for your soil number one to allow it to grow this much grass and the rest period then that follows that to allow it to grow more grass and uh, just management decisions that make for the ability to run lots of cattle on small amounts of land. So hope that helps and we'll be on to the next plot. So this is the final end point. This is a pasture that's recovered just one segment of it and you can see the grass is pretty tall this is Bahia grass this grass has had about 30 days of rest it's starting to get a little bit brown on the tops but there's still some good green in it <clears throat> and I think that's a hundred percent because the soil is covered there's uh, a good solar panel for the grass that was left from the last grazing and the grass has a chance to recover and grow leaves and so the cows will go into this pasture next after their current rotation and this will be about a four acre paddock and I'll probably leave them in this four acre paddock probably for oh I suspect three to four days and ignore the cows in the background they heard me come down here so they're expecting movement so this is the end result of rest recovery regrowth, protecting the soil from evaporation when we're in drought-like conditions or minimal rain conditions. And once we are at this point, then we'll graze this, get the cattle off, and go around the rotation and be back here probably in 30 to 45 days, probably about 45 days. So I hope this video is informative again Greg Judy is a hundred percent correct and I strongly would advocate you looking at his channel and seeing the things he recommends we don't have fescue in Texas we have different uh, hybrid grasses that are very helpful to our landscape and I just want you to see um, how that works down here uh, much further south than the Midwest have a great evening. Appreciate you all.